Hello everybody, it's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com and we are live here on YouTube. We're actually recording this video live on YouTube, but if you're looking for more Royal Caribbean news, information, fun, and advice, check out RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. And of course, every Friday we do record these videos live here on YouTube, so check them on out. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, turn on your notifications, so that way you can join us live each and every time we are live here on these uh, Friday videos. And today, we're sharing the top 10 commonly asked cruise questions. I get a lot of questions here at Royal Caribbean Blog about going on a Royal Caribbean cruise. And you know what? They, they run the full gamut. But there's definitely 10 that I get asked a lot. And today, we're going to answer those top 10 questions. And then after that, we're going to expand it and go to your questions in our chat. So let's start off with the most common questions, not top 10 for first-time cruisers. Number one, how do I get the lowest price on a Royal Caribbean cruise, right? Everyone always wants to know that deal. Whether you're a first-time cruiser or you've been there a hundred times, you don't want to overpay. And there isn't really so much a secret as so much it is about when you book. The best advice I can give you to get the lowest possible price is to book as early as you can. The sooner you book, odds are, generally speaking, the lower your price was going to be. Because keep in mind that as Royal Caribbean puts sailings for sale uh, for guests to book, you know, they start out, right, when they, day one, they have all the rooms available, and, uh, you know, so there's the greatest amount of availability. But as people start booking staterooms, the amount of availability goes down, and that drives prices up. So ideally, if you can book your cruise between 12 and 24 months ahead of time, that's a great strategy. Now, not to worry. If you're coming a lot closer to your sale date, the key is you want to book it as soon as you know you can go on your sailing. Don't wait for last-minute sales or try to time sales. Really what you want to do is book it as early as you can. Keeping in mind, if you're a resident of countries like the U.S., Canada, or Australia, you're able to actually cancel and rebook all the way up until final payment date and take advantage of price drops if they do occur. If you're a resident of the U.K., some other countries that you're not, that's not available to you. So keep that in mind. And the other great secret, by the way, to getting a great price on a cruise is to use a travel agent. I use a travel agent every single time. I go on, I book a cruise. And I recommend everyone do that as well because travel agents are really keyed in on some really good deals out there. Number two, what time can I arrive to the cruise? And when you complete your online check-in for your Royal Caribbean cruise, oftentimes a boarding time will be assigned to you. However, that time is more a suggestion than a rule. What that means is you can actually arrive to the port earlier than the time assigned to you. Some cruise lines are very stringent about what time to arrive for your cruise on embarkation day. But Royal Caribbean's boarding times are suggestions. They're not enforced. And you can certainly arrive a whole lot earlier than that. In fact, I like to encourage people to arrive before noontime simply because you'll beat the rush, you'll be among the first people on board the ship, and it'll maximize the time you have on day one. Don't forget, when you pay for that cruise, right, your cruise fare, it doesn't matter whether you show up at 10 a.m. or 2 p.m., you're paying the same price, you may as well maximize that. Next question, when can I start booking my shows, drink packages, shore excursions, basically anything before my cruise? When can I start booking that kind of stuff? And the, there's a really good answer, and it is, it depends. <laughs> I, I know it's not the answer I was looking for, but really, the when certain things become available to pre-book, whether we're talking about entertainment, uh, drink packages, dining packages, shore excursions, it really runs the gamut, and it can be all over the place, quite frankly. So there is no, first and foremost, there is no set time frame. There's no way for everybody in the fleet to have the set time frame. It just, it's one of those things that just simply show up. So what you want to do is just keep checking back. You want to log back in, Check for, uh, you know, comp periodically. Eventually, it will show up there. Now, when you get to about 90 days ahead before your cruise, you're in the ballpark. So if you haven't seen it yet, keep a good eye on it. Sometimes it gets as low as 45 days beforehand. Keeping in mind, by the way, that entertainment is only available to book on Quantum or Oasis-class ships. But drink packages, spa treatments, uh, internet packages, and, and the like can oftentimes be booked uh, before the cruise for all cruise ships. Um, but you got to keep checking back. There is just no set... Uh, there is no set answer. Next question, can I bring bottled water or soda or any soft drink on my cruise? The answer is yes. Royal Caribbean actually changed this rule uh, last year, and they allow now up to 12 bottles of uh, soft drinks, non-alcoholic beverages, that you may bring on board. That includes water, juice, soda, Powerade, uh, seltzer water, whatever non-alcoholic beverage you're talking about. You bring up to 12 per stateroom, and you must put it in your carry-on luggage. So do not put it in the luggage you give to the porters. Your luggage is going to get flagged in that situation and just going to take you forever to get it back. Don't do that. Put in your carry-on luggage, bring it on board the ship, and you're good to go. Now, you are allowed to bring also, up to, in addition to that, up to two bottles of wine per stateroom on your Royal Caribbean cruise. So two bottles of wine, and as well as up to 12 
uh, bottles, cans, whatever of soft drinks, and each uh, soft drink or non-alcoholic beverage cannot exceed, uh, I believe it's 17 ounces uh, in size. Now, if you're wondering about beer or another alcohol, you cannot bring that on board no matter what. No beer, no no liquor. The wine is the only alcohol you're allowed to bring, and that does include champagne, by the way. Uh, you can't bring wine or champagne because champagne is just sparkling wine. Two bottles per state room. Uh, next question, we talked about the wine, of course, and, and uh, can you bring wine? Yes, you can bring up to two 750 milliliter bottles per stateroom on board your cruise. Uh, keep in mind, though, there may be a corkage fee associated with opening the wine on board if you bring your wine to a dining room to, to enjoy, so keep that in mind. I also want to know, what drinks and food are included with my cruise fare? It's a really common question, right? What's included with it? Well, you're going to have a lot to go with you. First and foremost, you're not going to go hungry, right? Breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and snacking in between will offer a variety of venues uh, that will be open to you. that will have a gr lot of great dining options for you. Now, your cruise compass, which is the daily newspaper distributed to you every day of the cruise, will list exactly the places and times they will be available. In terms of which beverages will be available for your Royal Caribbean cruise, here's the basics. You're going to have unlimited tap water, milk, tea, coffee, regular and decaf, lemonade, iced tea, flavored waters, uh, as well as juices at breakfast and also hot chocolate via instant packets. These drinks are available throughout your cruise at a number of locations. There will always be somewhere to get something to drink that's included in their cruise fare. Likewise, there will always be food available for you on board the ship. Uh, the only exception is maybe late, late, late at night, in which case room service becomes your only available option. And room service has a service charge associated with it. But the bottom line is there is plenty of complimentary food available to you at no additional charge. Next common question we get here about Royal Caribbean, what is formal night, when is it, and how dress up do I have to be? Now, formal night is an evening where the dress code in the main dining room is more upscale. For men, we're talking about collared shirts with nice pants, tie and jacket are optional. For ladies, it's a nice cocktail dress or another dress or something similar. I'm not a fashion expert, but uh, typically on a Royal Caribbean seven-night cruise, you'll have two formal nights, so be sure to pack accordingly. Keeping in mind, by the way, that formal night only applies to the main dining room and nowhere else on the ship. So if you're going to a specialty restaurant on formal night, formal night doesn't apply to you. It's the same basic dress code for the specialty restaurants. If you're going to the Windjamere Buffet or Cafe Promenade or Sorrento's Pizza, dress code doesn't apply. If you want to walk around the ship, dress code doesn't apply. It only the, the formal night dress code only applies to the main dining room. Now, the, for, the first formal night, I should say, is almost always on the second night of your sailing, whereas the second formal night will vary between the fifth and sixth nights of a seven-night cruise. If you're on a shorter sailing, like a five nights or less cruise, you will only have one formal night, and odds are it'll be on night two. If you're going on a cruise that is 14 nights or longer, you lucky duck, you will have three formal nights. Next question, if I buy a drink package, does the other adult in my stateroom also have to buy a drink package? And the answer is yes. As of 2018, Royal Caribbean requires if one adult elects to purchase a unlimited alcohol package, all adults in the same stateroom, same stateroom, are required to buy a alcohol package as well. Next question we have very, very commonly, what's the best way to communicate with other guests on board, like my kids? And depending on the age of the people you want to stay in contact with and or your budget or their budget, there are a few options to stay in contact easily on board. Number one, each stateroom has a phone within the, your room that can be called from any other stateroom or public phone on board. So if you're trying to reach your guests on the ship, you can make, you can call their room from one of the public phones from your own room, leave a message, there's voicemail available as well. No cost to using that. Um, it's pretty simple, but of course, it can get you can oftentimes find yourself in a game of phone tag where they're not in the room, you leave a message, they call you back, you're not in the room anymore, so, so forth. So the next choice is to spend a little bit of money, or a lot of money depending on what you're looking at, to stay in contact otherwise. Uh, number one, you don't when you're using a cell phone on your Royal Caribbean cruise, you want to be very careful because you're out at sea, and that means you're roaming from a cell phone push perspective, from your cell phone carrier's pers perspective, I should say. So what you want to do in that situation is number one, you want to put your phone into airplane mode. Number two, you can actually purchase a internet package from Royal Caribbean and take advantage of a number of communication applications that are on your phone, whether we're talking about Skype. Uh, face, Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, there's a number, there's like a thousand and one messaging apps you can use, and that's a really good option for you. Uh, in addition, Royal Caribbean is working on an app that will have no additional cost to chat with other guests on board, but that's only available on two ships right now, Allure of the Seas and Harmony of the Seas. It is available, gonna be, eventually it's going to be fleet-wide, so this answer is going to be a whole lot easier 
uh, by the end of 2019. Uh, but in the meantime, the answer is it's only available on those two ships, so you're going to have to rely on other options. Now, there are also some other low-tech options like walkie-talkies or leaving notes on your stateroom door. Uh, whiteboards I've seen as well, so there you go. All right, next question. How do I make a dietary request? I have a restriction. You have a dietary request to make. And whether you have a dietary restriction or just a special request with your meals, you want to make the dietary request up front. Royal Caribbean can accommodate dietary needs off the bat without any special special requests for things like food allergies, gluten-free, kosher, low-fat, and low-sodium. So for those special needs, you don't have to do anything in advance. You'll have automatically menu options available to you. In addition, vegetarian meals, including Indian-style vegetarian, are all available on all menus in the main dining room. Guests do not need to make special requests for these meals also. Now, if you're lactose-free or, or you, need soy, you enjoy soy milk, uh, ensure and kosher meals are available at no extra charge. All you have to do is notify Royal Caribbean at least 45 days prior to sailing or 90 days prior to sailing for European and South American itineraries. Now, I'd say, well, how do I contact them? What you want to do is send an email to special underscore needs at rccl.com. Special underscore needs, that's plural, at rccl.com, including the email, your guest names, booking number, ship name, and sale date. Uh, it's best to make these requests at least 90 days before you're sailing. And if you forget to do this in advance or you're watching this video like a week before your cruise, don't freak out. It's okay. Speak to the head waiter on board your ship. Uh, go to the main dining room on day one. Ask to speak to the head waiter. Explain what's going on there. They're very accommodating. In general, Royal Caribbean is extremely accommodating with special needs. And uh, you should have no problems getting that taken care of. But if you have the, if you have the opportunity, definitely do that in advance. So there you go. Top 10 commonly asked first time Royal Caribbean cruise questions. Hope you enjoyed that. We're going to actually go to our chat room right now because we're recording this video live and our chatters in here have been posting all sorts of questions, I'm sure, in addition to the top 10 that I talked about. Valencia, we'll start with Valencia, says, if you purchase a long distance package with your cell phone plan, will you be able to make phone calls on the trip or use data? Um, depends on your carrier's plan, Valencia. I'm going to tell you, honestly, I wouldn't go for your cell phone's carrier plans. They're very expensive and I think you're better off, Valencia, just purely buying uh, an internet, pack, internet package and then putting your plane in airplane mode but then enabling it, uh, in your phone something called Wi-Fi calling. This is a new feature that's available pretty much on most major carriers. Uh, just Google your carrier name and Wi-Fi calling, how to enable it. Essentially, what Wi-Fi calling does is it allows your phone to use the internet to make phone calls and text message uh, instead of using a cell phone tower. Practice this before you go on the ship. Uh, you, can you should enable it before the ship and then practice before you go on board. So. Uh, Joseph Kaiser wants to know, I was wondering how much is the photo package? Is it worth it? And what's included in it? Well, it depends on which photo package you get, Joseph. There's many packages. There's some photo packages that have a set number of prints. Some are unlimited digital prints. You know, it comes on a USB stick. Some are uh, unlimited prints and, and USB. It's, it runs the gamut, really. In terms of is it worth it, it largely depends on you and if you take the time to take the photos. Some people will swear by it and they say get lots of great prints. But ultimately, Joseph, it depends on you to stop and take photos, right? What is the earliest way to, easiest way to decorate your stateroom door? Uh, John Buys, is, that's from John Buys. I've heard the tape is no good. That's correct. You cannot use tape, but you can use magnets. Magnets are the way to go. No question about it. Bernie Lane, my son is celebrating his birthday on a cruise. Can we get a cake for him? Absolutely. Speak to your head waiter. They'll be happy to help you with that one. Um, Brian McGinnis says, why would you decorate your door room? Because it's fun. It's a lot of fun, dude. You want to celebrate. You want to show everyone you know, where you're from or maybe you're with a group. It's a great, a lot of cruisers, you'll see doors decorated. It's a fun way to do that. Uh, Mark Anthony Bonanno, my first cruise eight days away on Brilliance. I've never been more excited. What's their favorite specialty restaurant on Brilliance? Oh, man. Uh, Izumi. I love Izumi. Great choice there. Um, let's see here. Michael wants to know, I booked the Wastes of the Seas for December. Do you know the upgrades, what they will be yet? I do not, Michael. Royal Caribbean has not announced it, but as soon as we do know the information, I will post it at royalcaribbeanblog.com. Ellen's going on a honeymoon cruise, but Wastes of the Seas. Can we ask in advance for a table for two? You can, Ellen. Uh, you can email Royal Caribbean. There's a, um... Oh, man. I got to get the email for you. Hang on. Bear with me here. Uh, dining room table two. There's an email address. I'm going to get you the email address. Uh, the answer, the email address is rcldining at rcl.com. So rccl.com, about two to three weeks prior time. So who asked me that question? Uh, Ellen. Ellen, I'm going to... Post it in chat right now. Uh, that's the email address to use. Send that. 
Send them an email about two to three weeks beforehand. Let them know your ship name, your reservation number, which dining rotation you're at, and you're all set to go. If you're in my time dining, don't worry about any of this stuff. You just ask when you uh, go up there. Uh, Tim, are there rooms that can accommodate a family of five? Is buying two rooms economical? There are rooms that can accommodate families of five, but Tim, it's, you're better off getting two rooms. In fact, a lot of times, two smaller rooms is cheaper than a room that can accommodate five. That's what I do. Uh, I don't have a family of five, but it's what I recommend every single time. I think it's your best bet. Uh, Miranda, 225 days till the honeymoon cruise. What is open when you board the ship early? Ooh, a lot of stuff is open, Miranda. Here's what you want to do, Miranda. I want you to, go, after this video, I want you to go to royalcaribbeanblog.com. I want you to go to our cruise compass section, our main menu. You will see a link to this cruise compass. Find the ship you're going on. That'll give you a really good idea of what to expect because that's going to have basically everything you need. Because here's the reality, Miranda. They don't change it up all that often, right? So if, you, if you're going on Allure this season, you find a cruise compass from last month or two months ago or three months ago or whatever from Allure, guess what? It's going to be pretty much the same on your sailing as well. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Cod Squad joining us here. Allure this season, 23 days. Shyesa, hope I'm saying that right. Uh, first side cruiser on Anthem of the season, November. Is the key worth it? Um, It can be. I would say if you were already going to buy the internet package and you're not staying in a suite and you're going to take advantage of what the key offers you, it can absolutely be worth it. Absolutely. Um, Ronnie says a reference to the drink package question if one person on the cabin has a medical condition is not allowed to drink by doctor's order you still need to buy for two people yeah but in a lot of in that situation Ronnie if you call Royal Caribbean and explain to them they'll let that second person buy the non-alcoholic drink package which is a lot cheaper than the alcoholic package so there you go uh, Hit It Hard says can you tell my wife that it's relatively safe to jump in a cabin Cosmo and go to Paradise Beach she's listening Hit It Hard's wife dude I, I go there every time it's very safe the cabs are great in Cozumel. I've done it like dozens and dozens of times. Never an issue. Yes, going to Paradise Beach. You'll have no problems at all. It's a great idea. Very safe. Go for it. Uh, Bruce, how far in advance can you print your luggage tags? A lot closer to your sailing. Um, I, it really has been, unfortunately, some of these things have changed over, over the years. Um, and I feel like these days, no more than about 45 days prior to sailing, Bruce. But it also requires you to fill it... Uh, bleh, to complete your online check-in as well. Our partner is selling on Navigator in 14 days. I just got off uh, Navigator the seas yesterday. I did a quick two-night selling after her big refurbishment. The ship is awesome. Hello, Z-Man. Hello, Penelope Perry. Welcome. Valencia, you can buy anything with cash on the cruise. Uh, no, the only, thing you, the only time you can use cash is either for gratuities, like to tip somebody, you know, an extra dollar or two, uh, and in the casino. But no, once you're on board the ship, Everything uses your C Pass cards. That's what you're going to want to use over there. Um, let's see here. Uh, Super Starian knows how. You guys have some awesome names here. 36 is the first ever cruise on Symphony. How varied are the food options of the Wind Jamer? Lots of variety. Breakfast, I, let me back that up for a second. Breakfast is, is pretty much the same menu every day, but for lunch and dinner, there will be some common things you'll see there every day, like hot dogs and burgers will be on the menu every day. But there will also be a good rotation of other options there. I find, quite frankly, the... The variety of food in the Windjammer, really, really good. Trey wants to know, is it better to book shore excursions through Royal Caribbean or a local company? I think it depends, Trey. I would not sit here and tell you that you should book one only with one or one, only with the other. I think you should look at what Royal Caribbean offers. I think you should look at what other third parties offer. And look what's of interest to you and make a decision based on that. You shouldn't limit yourself one way or the other. Uh, Stacy's going uh, to NASA on Coco Cay. Do I know which new attractions will be open in Coco Cay by then? In June? The water park and a variety of other activities should be open. Stacy, we'll post about it at realhermanblog.com in the month of May. So by June, you should be sitting pretty to enjoy the water park, the helium balloon, and a lot of other cool things on there. Um, let's see here. Uh, Jody says, can't you give guest services a bunch of cash? But you can do that, Jody. I guess I was taking the question more literally. Like, can she go to the shop or a restaurant and give them cash instead of using the CPAS card? You can't. But you're right, Jody. So what Jody is saying is what you do is you go to guest services, put down $100 in cash or whatever you want to do, and that's a, it's a, it's a credit against your account, which is essentially is the same difference, right? Uh, Christopher going on Symphony of the Seas on Saturday next week and just wondering what's the absolute must, uh, absolute go-to tip for first-timers. Uh, don't arrive to your cruise port the same day as your cruise ship leaves. You're going on next Saturday. That means if you're flying, Christopher, and this may already be too late, but don't fly in on the same day as your cruise leaves. You're, you're suddenly, if there's ever kind of any kind of travel delay, I fear you may be putting your cruise in jeopardy. But forgetting that for a moment, I would say get to your cruise terminal early. 
I would definitely recommend getting to the terminal around 11 o'clock hour. You'll beat the crowds, being the first to get on board. If you haven't done it already, Christopher, pre-purchase your drink packages, internet, uh, and dining packages. They, they are much cheaper online than they are on board the ship. Uh, and then also when you get on board the ship, uh, if, you, oh, if you haven't done it yet, Christopher, book your entertainment and explore the ship as much as you can on day one. That's a really important thing to do because there's a lot to see and you want to get your bearings as quickly as you can. Uh, Melinda, can you link your CPAS card to a different credit card or is each room one credit card uh, card? Uh, you can absolutely link them between different cards. At the very least, uh, Melinda, when you get to check in, they'll be able to help, they'll be able to set that up for you at the, at the very least. Michael, do you need a tip for your kids if they're six and two? Yes, my kids are four and uh, eight. Absolutely, every guest should have the gratuities paid for. Michael, they, they, the crew member, quite frankly, deserves the tips for that. Um, they're cleaning up after your, after yourself, whether it's you or the two-year-old. I would argue that sometimes the kids make a bigger mess than the adults. But yes, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Z-Man, what's there? How's the new Navigator of the Seas? I was on there about five years ago. I just, I did a quick two-night preview of Navigator of the Seas. It is incredible. Uh, they did an amazing job upgrading that ship. It kind of, it feels like a brand new cruise ship, quite frankly. So it's really, really nice. We posted some new photo, a lot of photos of what's changed on Navigator of the Seas at royalcaribbeanblog.com. Uh, let's see here. Is the internet package necessary, Michaela? No. If you don't want to use the internet, it's not necessary. It's only necessary if you want to really go for it and you know be connected. I like it because I'm a nerd, but I think you can have a great time without it. Uh, Shaisa, have you been on Anthem of the Seas? Any recommendations? I have, Shaisa. Um, if you go to royalcaribbeanblog.com, this is what you watch after this video. We have a first-timer's guide. It's a really in-depth blog post for a first-timer's guide to Anthem of the Seas. I want you to check that out. If you can't find something to message, I'll be happy to uh, send you the link. But just go to royalcaribbeanblog.com, search for Anthem First-Timer. You'll find the blog post I'm talking about there. Cliff Nash going on Independence in 59 days. Nice. The Sport Crazy wants to know, do the wristbands cost anything and how do we get them? Yes. If you're not in a suite, they will cost you $4.95 per band. You can reuse them on, on future sailings. And uh, you get them from guest services, at the very least. They may sell them in other places, but guest services will be able to hook you up. No question about it. Um, let's see here. Uh, Penelope Perry, I'm assuming that correctly, that Perfect Day Coco K paid activities will appear on the cruise planner for booking. That is correct. Absolutely. Yes. Um, Jack Bell wants to know, how much do drinks usually go for on ships? I'm not a heavy drinker, but when I go on vacation, I like to enjoy occasional beer or two. For beers, you're looking at probably $7 $8 a beer before gratuity, uh, if that helps you out there. Brian White, alert of the season two weeks. How often do Royal Ups actually come through? Uh, no one really knows, Brian, but I don't think it comes up quite that often. I wouldn't put much stock in that. I think it's more of a real gamble, so to speak. Um, Hit It Hard says, can you take advantage of the Royal Up bidding program while on the ship on day one? No, no, it has to be beforehand. Before the cruise. Before the cruise. Thyri is here. Welcome, Thyri. Glad to have you joining us here. Um, Pam says, well, at Perfect Day Coco Cay, how many hours do we get on the island? It depends on your itinerary. Check your itinerary. It will tell you. Now, keep in mind, you'll probably have to subtract about 30 minutes at the beginning, 30 minutes at the end, but that's basically how much time you really have on board. You'll have plenty of time, though. Um, I think that's, in most cases, enjoying the beach club through a water park. I think, um, you know, that's depending on how long you're there, obviously, but I think in most situations, you should have enough time to check both out there. Um... My oh, is a good question. Uh, Christopher wants to know what is my fit, my absolute must-have cocktail on board? Lava flow with crack and rum. The lava flow with crack and rum is a uh, pina colada with some fruit mixed in and some fantastic rum. You'll love that quite a bit. Um, Samantha wants to know: Can you purchase the internet for a day just to check in on your flight? You can, Samantha. You have to do it on board the ship. Keep in mind though, you'll pay about thirty dollars for that day. It's a twenty-four hour pass. It's not like a calendar day. It's twenty-four hours, but yes, you absolutely can. Uh, Joseph Kaiser wants to know, is the water in the pools cold? Well, no, they're pretty, they're, they are heated to some degree. They're not a bathtub, but they're warm enough, I would say. Uh, Z-Man, what's the newest ship going on in Galveston, Texas? Right now, that is Liberty of the Seas. Liberty of the Seas. Uh, Stacey Finch wants to know, what is Rail Up? So, Rail Up is a relatively new program. It's a stateroom bidding upgrade program where Royal Caribbean may or may not send you an email and say, Hey, Stacey. We see you're going on a, on a cruise soon. Would you like to bid for an upgrade? The thing is, it doesn't actually mean there are upgrades available. They just want to know if there was an upgrade available, how much more would you pay for it? So it's up to you if you want to actually go for it or not. In in my experience or my observations, it doesn't usually come through. But just an option there. 
Uh, ooh, True Janie Sue, you're going on Navigator for a nine-day cruise? Nice. Love that. Uh, Cosway, have you been to San, San Juan, Puerto Rico? If so, do you recommend anything to do? Yes. I've been to San Juan a number of times. Don't book any excursions. Just walk off the ship and explore old San Juan. There's a lot to do there and see. You don't need any excursions. It's a great walkable little city. Uh, I would recommend if you want some specific recommendations. Um, I think I said recommend. Re anyway, uh, check out RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, Cod Squad, and search for uh, things to do in old San Juan. We have some in-depth stuff all about that. So, Sinatera, what's my second favorite drink? Uh, Kraken and Diet Coke. Uh, but if you're looking for... Uh, so another really, really good... Um, how about the... Um, can't think of the name. I can, I can visualize the thing. Um, a mudslide. That's a really good drink as well. You'll like that one. Uh, we've got uh, someone from Iceland joining us in here. Welcome, Christopher. Glad to have you joining us from Iceland. Uh, if you're, By the way, if you're new... If this is the first time you've caught me live here on YouTube, type new in capital letters. I want to personally welcome you. Trey, best Alaska Shore excursion with a 14-year-old. Uh, Mendenhall Glacier Park. You'll love that one. Or uh, Meeting the Puppies. That's a nice one as well. Valencia, are the motion sickness bands available on the ship? They are, but they're really expensive. Book it beforehand. You really want to book it before, uh, buy it beforehand, rather, from like Amazon or your local pharmacy. They're significantly more expensive on board the ship. Uh, Madeline, doing Jewel of the Seas to Greece in July. Any recommendations for sail away, Madeline? So anytime your ship leaves a port, go down to the helipad. The helipad is open to you. On Jewel of the Seas, go down to deck, I think it's four, and walk all the way forward. You'll run right into it. It's an awesome spot for that. Uh, Cliff wants to know, is there any word on the new Oasis features coming up after the refurbishment? There is not yet, Cliff. As soon as I know it, I'll post it at RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. Uh, Penelope Perry with two Quantum Class, two Oasis Class, and two Icon Class over the next six years. Is Royal Caribbean amping it up, or has one a year been the normal schedule? That's more than one a year, Penelope. This year, three Royal Caribbean ships are getting amped up. One is Navigator, just completed. Number two would be Freedom of the Seas. And number three is uh, Voyager of the Seas. And we don't know what's coming. And Oasis. Actually, four. I, I completely lost count there. Jerry Holiday with the Super Chat. Thank you, Jerry, for the Super Chat. Really appreciate that. Jerry wants to know how many times is, or how many time changes for Royal Caribbean when cruising in the Caribbean. That's a really good question, Jerry. And the answer is it depends. It depends on your captain, actually. There is no policy. Sometimes you will change time. Sometimes you won't. As an example, I have, when you go into like, you know, Cozumel or somewhere in Central America, sometimes they are an hour behind Eastern Standard Time, but it is up to the captain whether or not they actually change times or not. So, uh, Jerry, I can't tell you definitively ahead of time, it literally depends. But in most cases, the answer is you don't, but it's happened probably 25% of the time we've had the time change. They'll let you know about it. Ronnie, any new, new any news about the new Oasis class ship name? Nope. Absolutely, unfortunately not, sir. But as soon as I know about it, I'll post it on RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. Uh, Crazy Cat Traveler, is a studio balcony on a longer sailing worth it versus interior with virtual balcony? Um, I don't know. Worth it? Depends how much time you spend in your room. I don't, I'm not really someone who spends a ton of time in my room. So, you know, I'm not, I, I don't know how, uh, how how good of a gauge I am, but we got a lot of new people in here. I love this. Mark Anthony, welcome. Cliff, welcome. Stacy Funk, welcome. Alicia, welcome. Jack Bell, welcome. Ann Taylor, welcome. Mary Santiago, welcome. Felicia Rodriguez, welcome. Brian McGinnis, welcome. Trey Graney, welcome. Wendy Hobbs, welcome. Melinda, welcome. Matt Temple, welcome. Bernie Lane, welcome. Jeff Rains, thank you. Ed Finley, welcome. Can't believe how many new folks are here. Christy Campbell, welcome. Brian's wife doesn't like the way I say Royal Caribbean. I say it really fast. Royal Caribbean. Royal Caribbean. Royal Caribbean. Gotta get a lot of questions there. Uh, Rebecca is also new from Perth, Australia. And Rebecca writes, I'm going to New Zealand on ovation of the season in November. What's the best experience on board? Oh, man. North Star. You gotta, that's the observational pod. It takes you up in the air, like 200, 300 feet in the air. It's amazing. You got to do that one. Uh, Gene Rochat is new. Welcome. Tim Flats is new. What's the difference between Johnny Rockets Express versus Johnny Rockets? Johnny Rockets Express is priced a la carte versus other Johnny Rockets on most ships that are, have a cover charge to them. Joe is not new, but Joe has, ha, who's so ski. I know I didn't say that right. I'm glad you're here again, dude. Uh, Jody Fleming, always glad to have you here, Jody. Appreciate your, your assistance. Uh, Son of Albie, welcome. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Patrick, welcome. Rod Kane, welcome. I think it's a new. To, I think I said welcome to all the new people, guys. Thanks so much for joining us here. Love that. And we are live every Friday. So again, 
make sure you hit the subscribe button, turn on your notifications, so that way you don't miss out on any of the fun. Uh, Taylor wants to know, if I use a travel agent, will I get a better deal on drinks packages or anything? I get all the emails and I've been doing everything myself. This is my third cruise. Good question, Taylor. So, uh, no, you won't get it. By using a travel agent, you don't get a discount on drink packages and things of that nature. By using a, a travel agent, the, they can greatly benefit you in a lot of other ways you may not have anticipated. Number one, obviously, when you're booking your cruise, they can help you find any discounts that are available. Not only when you're booking it, Taylor, but also all the way up until final payment day. If there's a new promotion that benefits you, they can take care of uh, of repricing it for you and doing all that work. In addition, they're like it's like having a lawyer, Taylor, right? The the travel agent is your is your speaks on your behalf and does all the work. They're the ones calling Royal Caribbean. They're doing all those little things for you. Meanwhile, that frees you up to watch awesome Royal Caribbean YouTube videos. And I'll tell you, Taylor, as you use travel agents more and more, I think you'll really see the benefit of using them. Uh, Sean is going to St. Martin. Wants to know how many people can Leo Brown accommodate a tour for? Um, he's got a van, and I think he has access to even larger vehicles. Definitely six to eight people easily. Uh, I would contact him, though, about specifics beyond that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Valencia is new as well. Is there a team club on Navigator of the Seas? Yes, there is. They just got a major refurbishment, Valencia. Absolutely. Uh, Lauren's selling on Navigator April 21st. What did you think of the ship? We've never sold on Royal Caribbean before. Dude, Lauren... I was blown away by the by the scale and scope of the changes made to Navigator. It's a fantastic ship. I am super jealous. You get to go on there uh, sooner than I get to go back. Because Lauren, two, I was on there for two nights, but it was amazing. Uh, the The changes are are super awesome. You're gonna love it. <laughs> and don't forget, if you haven't seen it yet, Lauren, we did post photos of what's changed at RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. Uh, Bendy is here and new. Welcome, Ben. Glad to have you joining us here. Son of Albie, I don't think you're new. Haven't you been here before? I thought I recognized your name, but I'm glad you're here nonetheless. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Stacey Funk, Mariner of the Seas, best experience. I'm actually going on Mariner in two weeks. Two weeks from today, I'll be on Mariner of the Seas. Um, but there's so many great things they've added. They have the Sky Pad, you've got the Bamboo Room, lots of great spaces on there. Uh, Art, can the main dining room seat 15 people together? No, I don't think there's a table that sees 15, but the very least are you can have multiple tables that are near each other. So, um, there you go. Jody says, share, like, subscribe, and hit the bell. There you go. Thank you, Jody. Appreciate that. Uh, kind words. That's how you kind of spread the word here and make sure you're here because a lot of people always ask, Matt, how do I join these live discussions? That's how you do it there. Um, let's see here. Uh, Felicia wants to know, should she make reservations for North Star, or is there a wait line? There is a standby line, Felicia, but you absolutely, positively want to make reservations because it is so popular, that North Star on the Quantum Class ships. You definitely want to book it in advance. Um, Digital, I asked about the room refresh last week. They posted a new feature, new furniture, linens, and carpet, and in one of the videos they showed replacing the shower doors. Can't wait for your video on the Navigator. Yeah, dude, it's really, really nice. Um... Patrick is going to smash that like and subscribe faster than I smash those cracking culottes. Patrick, you the man. I appreciate that, my friend. Son of Albie says, I love the forums. Thank you. That's a great underrated feature of RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. We have a message boards uh, section over there with a lot of friendly folks. Great community. I want you to check it on out as well. Uh, Mark, any recommendations for the Tampa port? Mark, do you mean like things to do in Tampa or like the port itself? Uh, my recommendation, if you're going to park at Tampa, use the park... Uh, do the official do the do the official parking in the in the in the um, you know the the <laughs> I can't spit this out. Park at the terminal. Don't do offsite parking. And on top of that, do the valet parking. It's best fifteen dollars extra you'll ever spend in your life. Um, to, can I do a symphony giveaway? If I had a symphony cruise to give away, I would love to. I don't have any free things to do there. Um, Jason Kennedy, great blog. Thank you. Going on Navigator in June. Should we snorkel excursion in NASA or Coco Cay? NASA. Coco Cay is, uh, is um, you want to take advantage of what's available on the island. No question about that. Uh, the Gar fam wants to know, what's my recommended Royal Caribbean ship? They're all wonderful, dude. There is not one ship I don't recommend. It's really a matter of what ship offers what you're looking for, you know? Are you looking for Broadway shows? Are you looking for a zip line? Are you looking for uh, fantastic, especially dining? Are you looking for a uh, relaxing cruise experience? Are you looking for a very economical sailing um, there's 25, soon to be 26 ships in the fleet, and they all offer a lot of great activities. There's not one I don't recommend. I think ultimately it just depends on what you're looking for in your sailing. 
Uh, Fear is the Mind Killer 2. <laughs> Gotta love the names. New here, is the Royal Tots and Babies included, or is there an additional charge? There is an additional charge. It's uh, $6 per child in the afternoon, in the daytime. And then at night, I think it goes up to about 7 or $8. But it's the best money you ever spent in your life. I have two kids. They both went through the nursery, and it's, uh, oh, it's, it's, it's the best thing ever. Uh, Adriana says, uh, first live chat. Welcome, Adriana. Glad to have you here. Garvin, what's my favorite chip? My favorite chip is uh, Harmony of the Seas. Number one is Harmony. Number two, Navigator. Um, let's see here. Joseph Kaiser in Miami. Have you stayed at the Intercontinental Hotel? Yes, Joseph. I have a full review of the Intercontinental Hotel in Miami at royalkoreanblog.com. It's a great hotel. Fabulous. I would stay there every single time if I could. Uh, Mike Medina, first time cruiser back, booked on Navigator for late April sailing. Ever heard of really last minute cruise bookings? Um, they do exist. Last minute sailings do exist, but they are very few and far between. And in a lot of cases, you're just, not only are the sailings, on, there aren't that many last minute deals available, but on top of that, there's going to be very few rooms available. I don't recommend using last minute bookings as a strategy. It's one of those things where you just kind of show up there. Uh, Jerry Holiday wrote in all caps, what time is your Friday live show usually? it was on all caps uh i don't have a time jerry but almost always in the evening um let's say between 7 and 10 p.m eastern time kind of depends uh let's see here do, 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 do. jeff sansom going on my first cruise to liberty in nine days what's the cost for room service 7.95 per order jeff so whether you order one thing or 20 things the cost is 7.95 per order uh, Cod Squad, do you know if Puerto Rico, St. Martin, and Labadee require your passport to be valid for at least six months before you're selling? No, they do not. Oh, Cuba is the only island in the Caribbean I'm aware of that has that policy. But the answer to your question is, for Puerto Rico, Saint, which is part of the United States, uh, St. Martin and Labadee, no, you don't have to worry about that that, recommend, that uh, particular rule that's in some countries. Joseph, you're very welcome. Um, Edwin Vargas with the Super Chat. Thank you, Edwin. Are restaurants not include are any restaurants not included in the BOGO dining package? Yes. Uh, primarily, there's two that I can think of off the top of my head. The Izumi Hibachi. Izumi, like sushi side, is available. Don't get me wrong. But this Hibachi Izumi and Chef's Table are not included in the BOGO dining package. Uh, is there entertainment for Spanish-speaking pe people? Alonzo wants to know. Uh, I mean, there's not like Spanish-language shows. Uh, there may be a lot of... Some ships have a Boleros location, which you'll have some Spanish music being played. But um, I'm not sure if that answers your question or not. James, we're flying the same day as cruising because of obligation. Should I pull out hair for the next 100? Yeah. Uh, James and Jody, if you, it's all possible. Even if you take, like, the last flight out in the evening, like, you know, and you get in at, like, midnight, it's still better. But if you're going to do that, if you're going to fly in the day of, make sure you take the first flight of the day. The, even at 6 a.m., do not let travel delays ruin or or potentially miss your cruise ship you know olivia how many royal cruise ships have i been on uh like 12 or 14 or so i've I'm, i've been on about 30 something royal caribbean sailings now not all different ships but uh hopefully that makes some sense there uh trey is chasing diamond plus status worth it no i don't think it is i think once you get to diamond it's totally fine trey the difference is after you get to diamond diamond plus is in my opinion not significant there are some but it's not like when you go from like emerald to diamond it's a huge jump in benefits diamond diamond plus is not a huge jump you know what i mean uh which ships have the abachi izumi the oasis class ships uh independence of the seas and mariner of the seas i don't think they have it on uh navigator uh let's see here uh, Alicia, sailing on navigator in july i wish they had longer cruises well you know what you could do alicia is book multiple sailings back to back to back then you get a longer sailing, right? Doing a three and a four nighter back to back, you're going to get seven nights. So that works as well. Uh, Mark, what's a good age to take a toddler on a cruise? I take them on as early as six months. I think it's absolutely worthwhile. It's a great time. Uh, make sure you go on a ship that has a nursery, of which almost all of them do. There's only a handful that do not. But as long as you have a ship that has a nursery, six months is, is great to go. Juan, what's the best part of the ship to stay? Aft, mid, or bow? Uh, they're all great, dude. Um, you can make a pretty good argument for... All places, I would probably say my number one preference would be mid, then aft, followed by bow. Bow? Bow? bow. For some reason, that name, the word is not working for me right now, but that'd be my preference. Uh, mid, aft. Actually, you know what I do, Juan? Here's my honest opinion. When I book a room, you can ask my travel agent this, I always say, I ask, say, can I get a room near the elevators? That's my number one priority. 
Uh, Carolyn uh, has a question. Carolyn Ferguson. This will be your third Royal Caribbean cruise. The first uh, with just me and my son going on Harmony of the Season in August. Just wondering if they'll seat us at dinner with another group if we want. Oh, absolutely. Yes. If you're doing traditional dining, Carolyn, they, you can absolutely request a table that's with other people. Speak to the head waiter about that. If you are doing my time dining, uh, ask to, um, when you make, when you go up to the, to the kiosk for your reservation, tell them you'd like to sit with other people. Uh, Harold writes, I love it, but I need conversation, adult conversation at dinner. No, no worries at all. That's pretty common, actually. Um, Shay, you know, you can drink alcohol in Texas waters. Um, the difference is in Texas, when you're, well, you're in, uh, if your ship leaves from Galveston, there are certain bars that will not be open. There's a limited sub menu of items available to you, but you can still have drinks in Texas. I've done this. I can tell you. It's not, it's not you can't drink. Just some places are closed. Does that make sense? Lame little lo local laws like that. Uh, let's see here. These are great questions, by the way. Uh, Shelly, going on uh, Mariner later month, had a junior suite upgraded to a grand suite using Royal Up. Is it worth getting the key program or are all the benefits of the grand suite comparable? <clears throat> um, I would probably tell you it's not worth it. I don't think it is. Unless, Shelly, you're looking to like do a lot of like the floor rider, uh, I don't think it would be worth it for you. Uh, so, uh, Alonzo wants to know, is Johnny Rockets a price per person or a la carte? It is a la carte with the exception of the Quantum Class ships. Sorry, that was backwards. Johnny Rockets has a cover charge. You pay one fee, you get everything on the menu. All the food, not the drinks. On the menu. Uh, on all the ships except for the Quantum Class and Navigator of the Seas. On Navigator and the Quantum Class ships, which are Anthem, Quantum, and Ovation, soon to be Spectrum. I don't think just Johnny Rockets on Spectrum. But anyway... Uh, in those ships, the Johnny Rockets is priced individually, so you only pay for what you order. Uh, let's see here. Good stuff. I'm going to have time for about one or two more questions, and then i got to run, but I appreciate you guys joining us here. Um, James says, what was your first 24-hour live marathon? I've never done a 24-hour live stream. I would die. <laughs> I'd fall asleep on the air. Uh, Nick Scallon wants to know, does Crown and Anchor Society statuses expire or roll back if you don't cruise for long periods of time? No, they do not do that, sir. You can go on it. You can attain pinnacle status and then never cruise again for another 10 years and come back to Royal Caribbean and have no problems whatsoever. Um, Jeff, ever try packing rum runners in your check back? Absolutely not. It's against the rules. It's not worth it. I, I, I just rather pay for the drink package. It's a whole lot easier, dude. You know what I mean? And it's against the rules, so definitely, if it's against the rules, totally against it. There's the reason why the rules are there. It's really, I don't think it's a big deal to either buy a drink package, and there are other, or take advantage of some other strategies for limiting your drinking costs on board and on shore. Um, Michael uh, Farr is going on a charter but and wants to know about the two bottles of wine rule. That's a good question, Michael. That I don't know the answer to. I would check with your charter company, because um, that's... With charter sailings, it's a little different rules all over the place. Um, Wayne Weston, when you say Johnny Rockets is a one pay, what do you mean by that? So, with the exception of the Quantum Class ships or Navigator, if you go to Johnny Rockets, you pay a cover charge. So, you pay a per person charge, and then you can order as much food as you want for that cover charge. You can pay, you can order seven burgers if you want. Still, so you just, that one cover charge covers that. Does that make sense? Uh, Alonzo, can you eat as much as you want in the restaurants that charge one price per person? Yes. The only exception, Alonzo, is in Chops Grill, you uh, are limited to one entree. But in most other specialty restaurants, no problem. And in the complimentary restaurants, Alonzo, like the main dining room, the Windjammer, Cafe Promenade, you can order as much as you want. No limits over there. Lori wants to know, can you get a milkshake at Johnny Rockets with a drink package without ordering a meal? The answer to that question, Lori, is no. You need to sit down for the meal. Rob, Roberto wants to know, do you leave your kids at Adventure Ocean when you're in port? Yes, occasionally we do, Roberto. It's a great strategy. Um, sometimes our kids don't want to do stuff we want to do, and they just want to have fun, and it works for us as well. Vegas, what is my next group cruise? I'm wearing the t-shirt for it. It is in two weeks from today, Mariner of the Seas. Olivia, can you bring beer instead of wine? No, just wine. It's the only alcoholic beverages available to bring on board your ship. Beer, liquor, anything that's not wine or champagne, you cannot bring on board your cruise. So there you go. Got, uh, and last question is from Adam. Is sake considered wine for the two wine rule? I, man, I never tried, dude. I don't know the answer to that question. My guess would be no, Adam, but it is rice wine. 
I don't know. I think you'd have to argue with them about that. But who knows? I, I've never tried. It's a real, I don't think it's the first time it's... I think it's the first time anyone's ever asked me that one. So I'm going to give you a firm I don't know. All right, guys. Um, I have... Uh, I've wrapped up all my time. Shaisa, um, about the Anthem of the Seas question. After this video, I've been on Anthem. Go to royalcaribbeanblog.com. Search for uh, Anthem First Time. You're going to find a first-timer's guide to Anthem of the Seas. It's going to answer your question there. Guys, if you got more questions, that's great. Check out our message boards at royalcaribbeanblog.com. I'm happy to answer them over there for you. And in addition, we'll be back again next Friday. So come join us here on, on uh, YouTube to answer more of your questions. Have a great rest of your day. And happy weekend. Enjoy it. Do something fun. And we'll talk again very soon right here on YouTube. Uh, see you guys later.